Okay. I'm sorry, but I have to make a video on this because this is just totally unprofessional by any mental health therapist that doesn't care about their employee, their employee, their client. So, yeah, let's hit that intro. So I don't know if you've heard, but apparently <laughs> the Canadian VA has a therapist that inappropriately talked about assisted suicide for a client that apparently was making improvements. I don't know if it was done in jest. I, I don't know because the Canadian VA is being pretty hush about this, but uh, I felt the need to get up this morning and make this a video. So... Let's talk about this. So we have this story here, but we also have it from the CBC. And they're calling it, a, calling it, quote, horrifying that a veteran is a affairs worker raised assisted suicide with a troubled veteran. And the problem is it is an issue. For some people, suicide is the only way out. For others, it's what spurs them to seek the help that they need. It spurs them to actually want to improve their mental health. For me, reaching out to the VA, a series of stressors in my life have, have boiled over and to the point that I was having nightmares about something that is very service related. So I reached out to the USVA. So let's take a look at the task and purpose video or video task and purpose article where they say that it is alleged according to the CBC and according to their own article, they say that the VA has confirmed that this happened. So a Canadian military veteran seeking counseling for post-traumatic stress disorder was offered a rather disturbing answer by an employee of the Canadian of Canada's Veterans Affairs Administration, medically assisted suicide. As reported by Canada's Global News, a veteran received the veteran received the advice to of medically assisted death, unprompted after seeking out treatment for a traumatic brain brain injury. The Veterans Affairs Canada confirmed that the incident occurred between the veteran and an employee, quote, where medical assistance in dying was discussed inappropriately, end quote. The agency also added that, added that it, quote, deeply regrets what transpired, end quote, and that, quote, appropriate administrative action will be taken, end quote, although no further details were offered. Medical assistance in dying was first legalized in Canada in 2016, although, quote, providing advice pertaining to medical assisted death is not a VAC service, end quote. Global News reported, adding that the agency's employees, quote, have no mandate or role to, in recommending medical assistance in dying to veterans, veteran clients, end quote. So here you have... Here you have the Veterans Affairs of Canada coming out and saying that while this is something that is legal for you know people to seek, it is not within our scope. We don't want people doing this because they want people to work out their issues. And maybe after time, this becomes a an option. I hope it never does, but... But maybe, you know, after treatment and progress stalling out to a point where there's they're not making headroom and there's a threat of a veteran being an issue to the society, this could be considered a viable treatment. I don't think it should be. I, I'd rather see them work it out, but it, it is what it is. But what strikes me through all this is that it's like the veteran claims and here we'll come back to the article 
According to the according to Global News, the veteran had never discussed the issue of medically assisted death, and was shocked by the suggestion. His family told told Global News that he was seeking treatment for injuries he suffered in the line of duty, and had he had been making progress in improvements to his mental and physical health before that bit of advice. This type of advice, especially if it's unprompted or even discussed solely on the behalf of the uh, provider, because, and I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate here. Maybe the provider is just trying to see where this person's thoughts on suicide lay. And that is wholly inappropriate, I would agree, for them to discuss. But at the same time, you want to know what your uh, you want to know what your clients are capable of. I might be shocked, but at the same time, I might I wouldn't necessarily run to the news media. But again, you know, strange times, you know. I want to also bring up the uh, CBC's article here, and this is just as much flack as the CBC gets for being a uh, state-run propaganda site, I, I have to agree with the headline here that it is that it's horrifying that a worker would raise this you know even though it's a group saying it but the head of a group that supports Canadian veterans says he was horrified to hear medical assistance in dying was brought up with a veteran who reached out to the Veterans Affairs Canada for help recently Officials with the federal department confirmed to CBC News that they have issued an apology directly to the veteran and launched a thorough internal investigation. And I'm not going to do the quotes on the investigation. Quote, it's just horrifying, end quote, said Scott Maxwell, the executive director of the Wounded Warriors Canada. Quote, A, how is it that a veteran, how is that veteran and the family doing? And B, and then B, What's the impact this will have on other veterans who might be in a similar state wanting to pick up a phone, call an agent, or a case manager to seek care? If just one veteran does not make that phone call, we have we have ourselves a significant problem, end quote. And, it, and this is kind of where my thoughts go with this, is it's, this is very much an issue that can cascade because if we allow our veterans to take the easy way out, especially when it's assisted, it it's no we no longer are viably capable of treating them. We cannot treat them effectively or rationally like we would want to. And again, you you can't really somebody who's truly committed to committing suicide it is is going to do it. And I think, and I think that I could understand and even come to reason with the state effectively assisting with that. And maybe with a state assistance, you know, you you can show a course of treatment where the things weren't improving. You know, it, it can't be something short term like six months to a year. It's got to be a long term process, in my opinion. But it's just the fact that it was raised, what really irritates me about this, the fact that it was raised without prior discussion of suicide by the member at all. And again, this is alleged and according to the, the member in the news media here. We, we should not be seeking this as a treatment. We should not be showing this as a potential treatment. Let's actually let our mental health providers work. Now, if this mental health provider did it as a joke, it's a poorly, ta it's a poor tasting joke. If they did it as, because they're just burnt out on dealing with veterans and their issues, resign. Like seriously, if you can't handle what you're hearing from these people, then you need to get out of the profession for a while. Maybe go back to school, and if you're a, a therapist, go get your doctorate in psychology or psychiatry. Go, go work on yourself. 
And if you're if you did this because you're tired of your if you don't have a therapist, go get a therapist yourself. Sometimes it you just need to have somebody you can vent to. So it's it's understandable. Don't agree with it, but it's understandable. So I've kind of rambled along here for quite a bit, but it's this story, these types of stories really irritate me because Again, as a veteran, going through mental health issues myself and going to therapy, as a matter of fact, at the time of recording this video, I have therapy tomorrow. I'm sure I'm going to bring this up or my therapist will bring this up. Even though her and I know that I don't have any suicidal ideations, even though her and I know that if this was an option, I would reject it outright because of my own personal beliefs on suicide. I'm not ashamed to admit that I think suicide is a coward's way out. It's for those that have given up on hope. And it's and it's not so much that I think it's a coward of the person themselves. I think it's a cowardice of the support group around them or the lack thereof. We need to work to help these people. We need to work to help our brothers and sisters in arms. And if we can't do that, then we are failing our we are failing and we're allowing this cowardice. And it's not to say that cowardice is wrong a healthy fear of things to make you cowardly into doing of doing something is you know rooted genetically into us we don't want to always put our lives at risk we don't always want to put you know those that we love and care about through undue harm or burdens but when suicide is appears to be the only option We failed you. The support group around you has failed you. So I know this is a bit of a heavy topic and kind of rushed on my part. I normally would think about these a little bit more, but I just, I can't, to be honest. I just can't. So with that, let's, let's move on to happier notes. Let's work on helping each other out. Let's help build each other up. Yes, a little bit of taking the mickey, a little bit of poking and prodding and having fun is okay. But if you see somebody that's struggling, let's try to get them the help that they deserve. Let's try to help them help themselves and show them the worth that they have. It's hard. And sometimes you really feel like you want to berate somebody, but you you just have to be there for them. And that and it's hard, especially when you're dealing with your own issues. So with that, take care. Enjoy your weekend. I hope to be able to see you guys out and about in online and discuss things. And yeah, just be there for each other. If you like the video content, please go check out my podcast, Thoughts by Jay Brown, audio-only podcast, available on Spotify, uh, Google uh, Google Podcasts, uh, Apple Podcasts, and the like. Uh, if you're looking for travel, hit me up at jay at hopskippingadream.com to make all your travel dreams possible. I'm willing to work with you, and if I can't do it, then somebody else, uh, I know people who can. And, yeah, I think one of the dogs wants out. <laughs> Anyways, with that, uh, just be sure to reach out. And that's all I have. Peace, guys.